I call this meeting to order. And first up is the citizenship board. Yes, it is. And Mr. Gardner uh, wrote something here for me to read regarding our citizenship award winner for June, Miss Alyssa Johnson. There she is. <laughs> uh, Alyssa is one of our brightest stars at Elmira High School. She shines academically, athletically, and as a student leader, she maintains above a 4.0 GPA while taking very challenging classes. She's an outstanding athlete. As a distance runner, she qualified for both the state meet in cross country and the track. As and in our leadership program, she's a very hard worker who many of her fellow students look up to. She's also just a genuinely good person who really epitomizes what it means to be an Elmira Falcon. So, Melissa Johnson, our citizen of Elmira High School. Congratulations, Miss Alyssa. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. This is a fancy flat worth nine and a half cents. Priceless. And can you lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Don't you like me to stick around? No, it was really exciting. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so uh, next we have the Janet and Gary I is that Swanson? Yeah. Yes. The scholarship fund. So I just wanted to uh, a talk about this event. It's quite a big deal. And Mr. Swanson, uh, Gary is here tonight. Uh, so Gary and his sister. Uh, donated over three hundred thousand dollars to this book. Wow! To develop a scholarship. Remarkable. Uh, we've invested it with um, Oregon Community Foundation. Uh, they have a panel of uh, committee members that meet to allocate these scholarships. I believe the first year you guys awarded three, right? Yeah. Uh, three nice. scholarships. Uh, this year, I think the renewal for two years of focus is on um, students that might be pursuing a career in CTE related things and also uh, students living with a disability. Uh, so, you know, obviously, it's a tremendously generous uh, gift that'll uh, it's endowed and will be forever. Um, we're just spending down the, the interest on this and uh, you know, quite a quite a remarkable feat. So I just wanted to introduce you to Gary. And Gary, the floor is yours if you want to tell us a little bit about how this came about. I've been thinking about doing this for a number of years, my sister and I. Um, but with you know COVID and, and the damages and ravages of the wildfire that came through where we live and, and a number of other things in the midst of building a new home, um, nevertheless, we decided this is a good time to do it. There been some suffering in our in our societies. Yeah. Uh, it changed the way people looked at issues like paying it forward. Um, so we decided to do it. And I came down and met with Kerry and we made a long talk and he sort of lighthoused me way on, on the path to get this done. <laughs> um, and we put it together and we had everything in place about two months ago, I believe. And uh, we were able to come down and, and award the scholarships to the kids that had been uh, Chosen by the committee to receive them. I, my father is, has been has been in this community a long time, which was the Swanson Brothers Lumber Enterprises down in um, And at a very very young age, I was exposed to things that my father did that were, you know, really that, that hands up approach rather than hands out. 
I think I was influenced by that, and maybe didn't know it, and a little bit later in life discovered what that really meant. Um, different ways that you can approach life by doing that to, to assist people. Uh, we felt strongly that this had to be something that outlived us, and probably, hopefully, everyone here yeah. <laughs> uh, to a right old age before you <laughs> go. Nevertheless, we want it to be long term. Um, we were more concerned about selecting kids that were having a difficult time at this point moving through the educational system. Uh, trade schools were important to us. Uh, but the simple fact that we really realized not everybody does a four year route, not everybody becomes a doctor, but they need an equal chance. And that was kind of the basis of our decision to set this up and bring it to fruition. And the district was marvelous to work with. And, and uh, they were always right there with answers to my questions and welcoming and inviting us. And, and we really, Jan and I really appreciate it. She couldn't be here tonight. She's on a vacation on a train. I'm not even sure where she is. <laughs> but this is something that's been planned for about eight months. So she had decided to go ahead and do that and said I'd speak on her behalf. And knowing my sister, she would not say anything. <laughs> so here we are. Well, obviously. You know, we're tremendously grateful, and uh, you got a chance to come to the awards night. Yeah, it's really great. That's fun. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's fun to see that, see the recipients and get to look in their eyes. Yeah. And when they got that, there was something a little different in those eyes. Yeah. And I, I like that. Good feeling of future for them. Yeah. Okay. Well, thanks so much. Yep. Yeah. More than welcome. Yeah, thank you. I for recognizing that not everyone is on the four-year track and that there are still lots of opportunities to be had for the students that aren't on that four-year track and to support them in, what, in their endeavors to uh, reach, reach their goals that are not necessarily a traditional track. So thank you again. Appreciate it very much. With your um, thanks, my thanks to all of you. I've got about a two hour drive home, so I'll take a reading and uh, we'll have dinner with my wife who's in the car and then we'll head on to the road. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Theater semi annual update. And that's Vicki. Can you hear us, Vicki? Unmute. I am here. Can you hear me now? Yes. Oh, good. Okay. Um, this was different than the last time I've done it with the uh, with the uh, Zoom. So sorry. Um, and I and I am now trying to figure out how it won't let me go off. Um, well, I had my speech over on the side and now I can't get to it. So, um, hmm. well, I guess I'll do it off the cuff. Uh, <laughs> Um, hello again. Um, we, uh, we're keeping our heads above water uh, with COVID's lasting a whole lot longer than any of us want it to. And it's really hit us hard the last uh, couple months with in terms of our board and our volunteers. Um, we uh, decided early on this year that um, we were going to do outside musical concerts. And uh, we scheduled 10 concerts from May through September to a month. And uh, uh, each one had two acts. And so we're, we tried to pair local Fern Ridge uh, 
musicians with uh, Eugene musicians to try to draw audiences from both um, and to showcase the local talent. Um, we had our first one on May 22nd and um, oh, under overcast skies. And then the next two were canceled because of rain. So our next one is going to be this Sunday and it looks like it's gonna be great weather. So it should be a great concert. Um, and then we moved the ones that we postponed into August. So we're gonna have five concerts in a row from the end of July till the end of August. Um, we're also going to try to have four or five uh, uh, plays inside starting in probably September. This is all COVID depending. Um, and uh, we're gonna have a a drama we're planning right now on Lion in Winter. And we're also gonna have a melodrama and a children's theater and a musical and a comedy, hopefully. Um, oh, that's spanning 22, 23 season. Um, let's see, we're also uh, going to see if we're going to have uh, musical concerts inside during the winter. Well, that's still in the planning stages. Um, so we, uh, we're still doing things and, uh, we're going to, we're offering the, uh, athletic fields as, um, RV camping for the, uh, athletic championships in July, um, because there's such a, uh, need for places for people to stay. Um, and, uh, let's see what, what else. Um, I think that's about it. I don't remember anything else in my speech. Um, and we wanted to thank you for the opportunity to, to make good things happen out here. Well, sounds like you're, you're making the most of the, a, the, a bad situation with the weather and all that. Yeah. So, it's been a challenge. Hopefully we're into summer now. So. <laughs> they say so. <laughs> it's supposed to be upper 80s and sunshine on Sunday. So that's, that's most, cool. it, yes. Yep. Thanks, Vicki. You're welcome. Thank you. Okay, chartwells. Thank you for letting me present. Um, I have a little slide, so we'll basically go over a little bit of things. Um, looking back in this year, my first year, it was great to be here. Um, it's great to work with Charlie Wells and the Fernal School District. Uh, we had an opportunity. Um, you want to do the next slide? Sorry. There we go. It was a year of opportunities, not challenges, but opportunities. <laughs> um, with COVID, we lost quite a large number of um, years of experience in our staff, but we were able to hire six new team members, me being one of them, and then Yadira Child, Brianna Waldecker, Kimberly Tibbetts, Samantha Bailey, and Melody Housley. All but one of those um, employees have students in the district, which is great. Um, I was able to learn from an amazing returning staff um, Violet, who's been here 20 plus years, um, she was in my position before that. The Renee, she's almost been here 20 years. That's the Jill at Supremo. Um, we had our administrative review this year. Every three years, the ODE, or the Department of Education, comes in and makes sure we're doing things copacetic the right way. We're feeding the right meals with the right nutri nutrients, um, and we're reporting those. Right, thanks to Kwana's help, um, we passed the flying colors, there was no issues. Um, and thanks to the COVID situation, I got to learn the chef store layout intimately. <laughs> um, the supply chain was, for lack of a better term, miserable. Um, but luckily, the US, um, US chef store had some availability, and I was able to. Be a little creative. We didn't have to change the menu that often, but every blue moon we had to switch 
last one into a different meal. And we served over 110,000 lunches and 50,000 breakfasts for the year. Um, we started salads in April, which surprised the achievers out of me because I didn't really think the elementary students would have any salads. It was like, <laughs> you have a hamburger, you have a pizza, you have a salad, what are you going to have? Well, almost 50% of the students had salad for the first two weeks. Wow. <laughs> it's gone down a little bit since then, about 10% now, but that was obviously they wanted more choices, which is great that we were able to do that. I'm uh, looking forward to 20. 223. Um, unfortunately, we're going to be continuing use, using US um, Chef Store. Um, we need to find one more amazing staff member, um, or hopefully, our driver who's been on sick leave will be able to return. Um, he's been with us for eight, nine years, so hopefully, he'll be able to return. Um, we're going to reduce our plastic and paper usage. Um, we're going to go to metal flatware and some other minor things um, to reduce our carbon footprint. to reduce the waste. Um, I'm looking to bring in more variety for the breakfast meal. Um, this year with the supply chain issues, um, we weren't able to be creative in breakfast as much as we needed to be. Um, we're going to bring back the student worker program, hopefully, because we are returning to a fee-based system. Um, last year, um, everything was free. Everybody got a meal free, it didn't matter. This year, all that's going away, and we're going back to everybody has to either be on free, reduced, um, free, or pay. Um, so that adds a little labor to that situation. Um, our expectations for 2022, 23, um, we're hopefully going to bring back the community events that we used to do in the past, Thanksgiving, March, um, the year in barbecue. And I'm not aware of any other ones that we used to do, but I cookies. Would, Cookies. That's a big one. I always forget cookies. <laughs> um, I'll do cookies. Valentine's cookies. Um, oh, we did that this year. Oh, you did? We did. Uh, oh, I didn't get like 10,000 cards that day. I think it was, was Valentine's cookies. We made Christmas cookies. We made Christmas cookies. Yeah, that's, that's what we did. We did Valentine's. Um, we're going to have really presentation. Some of the things at the high school are. Um, how things are presented weren't the best. Same with some of the, the schools, so we're going to work on that. Um, we're going to include other events like Mood Boost, Discovery Kitchen, Lucky Trade. All these are Chartwell sponsored or Chartwell events that um, help bring participation to the meal program. Any questions? One of the reasons, though, you know, we have a board policy that Chartwell kind of comes talk to you guys once a year, so that's why Bo's here. And, um, I just wanted to thank Bo for you know, kind of obviously Bo came to us new last year, but it's there hasn't been a blip on the radar screen as far as any significant uh, issues. Bo's just directed the ship great, um, and look forward to continuing to work with him. Look forward to it also. Thank you very much. Thanks, Bo. Okay, so um, we have one person signed up for public comments, and I, can, I think I recognize the way of the donkey. <laughs> Hi there. I'm Nancy, the donkey lady, and um, I was going to offer to bring my, I did offer to bring my donkey for you to meet. Gary suggested maybe that might not work, but <laughs> Wednesday. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> okay, so Wednesday and Saturdays, uh, my donkeys are going to be at the shops at um, of, of Benita and Saturday um, for the farmer's market. And I'm going to be um, working on empowering kids by letting them walk the donkeys oh. and also positive parenting in the way of the donkey. So this is a document that you can read that I'm um, working on. Now, all of my work, um, I should say I'm a master's in special ed uh, with a focus on serving kids with uh, behavior challenges and a lot of work in bullying. And I've integrated a lot of the science of resilience 
into what I've been doing, I actually had the incredible opportunity to have my donkeys at two after school programs with uh, Eugene Fort And they were five week programs where I was able to teach kids the way of the donkey. And I, there's a um, letter of recommendation on my site. The teachers noticed changes in my students, be, in their students' behavior from the lessons that I was providing. So I'd like to teach you a little bit of the way of the donkey. Donkeys have traits that if we follow can help us feel happier, more empowered, and respond effectively when things get tough. This is all grounded in research. I can give you pages of research on this. Donkeys make connections. They're all connected with their buddies on the field. So connect with friends. Donkeys scratch each other's back. So reach out to be kind. Donkeys are very smart and they like to learn new things. So build your strengths. Donkeys are very thankful, especially to bring carrots. But I never let kids feed them carrots because fingers look too much like carrots, so we don't want to teach donkeys the wrong things. Donkeys evolved in rocky terrain. That makes them different from horses. Horses evolved on the plane, so stress, they go into flight, which is what, just what kids who experience trauma or stress do. Donkeys evolved in rocky terrain. So if things get tough, they stay calm. They stand very tall. And they think things through. Now this is Opie with one of my donkeys. And Opie saw himself in the window. He didn't run. He went and looked. He Look how tall he's standing. And he thought things through. He tried to get through the couldn't figure out how to do that. And when that didn't work, and sometimes the first thing you try doesn't work, he tried to walk through the door. <laughs> so that was the perfect clue. So now, all the kids learn about their brain. Your time is up. Oh, OK. <laughs> um, so what I'm going to be doing this summer is bringing my donkeys to the elementary school. I'm also open to bringing them to middle school and high school. And they're going to be. Um, and I'm going to do an after school program at the Elmira Grange, two groups of K2, two groups of three fives, and they're going to come one day a week because that way we can have a more extended approach. And this is uh, all presuming funding, which I think is coming from OIESD. And I should be able to do that for two more four week sessions once school starts. So. Great. Awesome. Very good. Well, thank, thank you thank very you. much. <laughs> oh, and I brought some donkey cards. <laughs> um, and you're, there are five sets. There's five cards oh, oh, oh. in each set. And so you get to fight over them. <laughs> And they'll probably get a couple of Thank you so much. And Lisa and Michelle have just been great to work with, but you already know that. Yes, we do. Thank you for saying it, though. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Uh, looks like we're going to approve approve minutes next. I will take a motion. I make a motion to approve the board meeting minutes. I'll second. It has been moved and seconded. Any uh, discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, four, zero. Uh, and then enrollment reports. Is Kwana online? Yeah. I am here. Hello, hello. Hello. I'll wait for her to come up on the screen. There it is. Okay, so this is as of June 1st. 
Um, Elmira Elementary ended the year with an average class size of 22 and a half and Benita at 24. Our elementary enrollment was up by two stu 10 students, excuse me, compared to last year. Um, but we were still down 13 students compared to budgeted numbers. The middle school ended up with 42 fewer students compared to this time last year and 31 compared to budgeted. And the high school was down five students compared to this time last year and 56 from budgeted. So overall, we had um, 100 fewer students um, from what we adopted in our budget. Um, it also, WLTLC ended up at 59, which is um, six less than they had last year at this time. And that is all I have on that. And I have the financial report to go over as well. Okay, so we've received 104% of our budgeted revenue. We did end up receiving a fairly large payment of timber revenue, um, which I just hate getting, it seems like it always happens at the end of the year. Um, so that has been put into a liability for repayment next year because they will take it out next May. Um, we also received some new funds from House Bill 5006. Um, that was the bill that included grants to counties for reimbursement of lost, lost tax revenue related to the 2020 wildfires. Um, yeah, so we received that in May. Um, it was $5,783, and I, I don't know if we're receiving more or not. Um, and the funds for that, um, they were actually placed in the general fund under um, an unrestricted grant. It's included in this $43,000 number under other revenue. Um, but they, yeah, ODE did not want us putting it in with our, lumping it in with our normal tax revenue. So um, that is outside of that. And then as far as expenditures go, um, we're, we were at 70% last year, so pretty similar. Um, our largest payroll occurred last week, so that definitely, um, you know, will be going up once this month is closed out. Um, I'm hoping by next board meeting, we'll have a fairly good idea of our final underspending number. We're working on following up on all the open purchase orders and trying to get them closed out so we can kind of see where we're at. And that is about all I have. Unless Great someone question. has, do you have any questions, the board members? Yes. I'll motion to approve the May 31st financial report. Second. It has been moved and seconded. Uh, do we have any additional discussion? All right. All in favor? Aye. Four two. Thank you, Kwana. Yeah. Okay. Am I up again? No. I'll have to open my computer to. Do I just open the but the okay? Uh, so at this point, I'm going to open the uh, 2022 23 public budget hearing. We have and, no comments submitted. Okay. And no one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I will close the public hearing on the 2022-23 budget. And um, we'll, I'll take a motion. So I'll make a motion to approve uh, resolution number 21-22-09 uh, as presented. I second that. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. All 
All right. Uh, okay, Michelle. Yeah. Um, make sure they adopt the um, resolution for imposing the taxes too. That's at the bottom of the budget resolution for appropriations. I don't know if that's in a different section you have, but I just wanted to make sure that that gets done as well. Is it all included in that same resolution of nine? Yeah, down at the bottom, but I think they have to, you know, specifically. It's not a different number. If they've set a resolution as written, do we you want more specific language? I I don't, I mean, I guess we don't have to. I think in the past we've said, um, you know, that we're adopting the, imposing the taxes, but if you okay. think it's fine, then I'm fine with it. I would make a motion that we, Impose the taxes at a rate of one thousand dollars assessed value of four point eight two four zero for permanent tax rate, and in the amount of two million four hundred eighty six thousand six hundred twelve for debt services and general obligation bonds. Um, also, the permanent rate of well, I already did that. That's it. Else? Thanks, right. Mark. <laughs> Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? All right. All in favor. Aye. Aye. Four zero. So that noted as an amended motion. Yeah, I, that would probably be fine. Okay. All right. Uh, Director of K twelve programs report. I, I don't have a whole lot. We're wrapping up this year. It's kind of busy and chaotic, and already starting to think about next year. So. <laughs> I don't even know where I would start. Short and sweet, things are going great. Okay. Well, superintendent report. I'll be short too, but I have a few items. I wanted to recognize uh, you know, a couple things. One, I got to visit all the graduations and promotions. So thank the building. I thought all those went really well um, at each school and take a lot of work from not only administrators but staff to put on. High school graduation was excellent. Um, and then I also wanted to thank you. We made it through this year. See, Forrest is here. Just take a moment to recognize our association leadership, both free and OSCA, that helped us certainly get here and, and manage a lot of uh, difficult problems to solve <laughs> along the way we did that. Uh, I think it's okay to say that what your role is going to be next year. Yeah. So, Forrest will be on. Um, had some transition in the last few years, but Forrest, before he retires, won one more year as the three year president. So I'll be working with him uh, closely over the next year. So I'm thankful. Wanting. Yeah. yeah. Um, we do have a lot of uh, busy things we're tying up here uh, this week and next, and then it's really full on the summer school, which starts July 11th, um, which, as you heard, left off piece of summer school. <laughs> Uh, and then another thing just to get on your radar that we'll have coming to you in the next month or two is an updated uh, Haas plan, which is our Healthy and Safe Schools plan. That's where we track um, the things we do to around asbestos, lead paint, or specifically all of our water testing. Uh, this is a year we're supposed to do it 2022. In my mind, that meant 2022, but it was supposed to be 2022 before July 1. So we met with the guy last week. We're working on our plan over the course of the next few months. It's quite, you know, we have to test every faucet in every building oh, wow. uh, and get it sent off. And then, there's some exceptions, like the washing exception. station. Yeah, like if, if you think there's no way a kid's going to drink out of it. But they encourage you to do it. Yeah. <laughs> like a guard goes outside, we can accept. So, you know, but if it's on the football field where somebody might drink out, we've got to test that one too. Anyways, so I just uh, getting on your radar that we'll have Michelle uh, and Jeff are spending uh, some time on that. We've rewritten, uh, made some updates to our plan, but if not July, probably August, we'll get an update and, and see how that went. Not 100% sure when our water testing will be done because there's strict requirements around uh, how it has to be the first draw of the morning. Um, and they're supposed to be when kids are in school in session, and if it's not, then we have to flush the whole system and then 12 hours later do the whole testing. So we might end up waiting to do the actual testing until uh, school starts, but we'll get prepared, get all our faucets numbered and all the bottles ordered. Um, 
get a plan in place to, to get that done. So I'll keep you posted on that. And that's all I have. Yeah. Okay, so now we are going to approve some options curriculum. Yeah, you, I, uh, well, Michelle might know more about this than I, but the I don't anticipate as of today that high school is going to have any new courses in the fall that we haven't had before. They have some new courses, but they're being ones that we've had. The middle school might have a couple mm -hmm. a little later in the summer. But then this uh, is kind of a first round of ingenuity courses that uh, Mr. Cooper is wanting to get approved. And it sounds like there might be a couple more come August uh, as we kind of get aligned with some more offerings that the high school offers. So if a kid goes to options, they can transition uh, smoothly, not lose credit and that kind of thing. So uh, nothing out of the ordinary here. There's no courses that are, you know, anything um, controversial or just uh, traditional elective courses. I think most of them. Um, so anything to add, Mr. Cooper? All right. Okay. The email included links to the courses, so uh, I will take a motion. I make a motion to approve the curriculum proposal. I'll second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Four zero. So this is, I forgot we're doing this. This is uh, something you do every year um, when we are sending or parents are electing to have a student go to a program outside of our district for whatever reason. It can be a wide range of reasons. Maybe the IP team placed the kid there. Um, we need to identify that program as one that the district uh, has approved. As a side note, Superintendents throughout Lane County are charged with doing an evaluation of these programs every year. So there was a year I did uh, one. I, did, I wasn't in charge of any this year. But the uh, bottom line is that BSD coordinates all these programs getting evaluated, making sure they're up to speed on Division 22. They make the approved list, the districts can sign up to approve them. So uh, once you um, agree to this, uh, there'll be an approved program that a primary school district kid could go to. So I'll make a motion to approve the alternate education programs as presented. I second it. We move and second it. All in, uh, any discussion? <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Four. Zero. I don't think anything changed here, right? Um, Just that we treat it, I think. Wasn't that the original day, was it? Um, I think that it's one we did. It's one we uh, that you sent out. I think it's Thursday the eleventh. Thursday the eleventh. Uh, Eight to noon. And if you know, as so we approach that, we'll probably talk about it a little more in July. Well, a couple of things. One, any board member at any time between now and the next four, six, eight weeks, if you have a topic that you'd like to discuss there, uh, and I've already got a couple, um, shoot them to me. A couple of weeks at a time, I'll get us an agenda. If for some reason we know we just really can't accomplish all that in four hours, we'll uh, do the four and set another time. So I'll make a motion to approve the uh, meeting schedule for 2022 through 2023. Second. Been moved and seconded. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Four zero. Almost forgot to vote. <laughs> and then uh, the personnel. Looks like we have quite a few new hires. Yes, we do. And what 
Only one retirement? Yes, and we have, are buying her back, so she'll still be here next year, Miss Miller. Oh. She's retiring on paper, but she's still working. <laughs> So can we uh, just do all of this at once? I'll make a motion to approve the retirement hirings, transfers, and resignations as presented. I second. It has been moved and seconded. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Four zero. And then this is just for our information and not don't be the motion. Our, I'll comment on this a little bit. You know, our athletic director that was um, Brittany staying on, on as our trainer, and she felt like the athletic director was a little bit too much. We've hired a new assistant principal at high school. We'll go back to the format of the assistant principal having the athletic director duties. Uh, it was when Mr. Brands was in that role. Uh, so he was, he's not signed on yet, but he's, he's accepted. He's verbally accepted the job. A uh, younger guy from Pleasant Hill who's been working in a similar role um, uh, the last year or two as a student. Mark was actually on the committee to hire him. Anything you want to share? Uh, yeah, you know, good three, three, you interviewed three people. Uh, he definitely had the most um, experience with athletics. Uh, I think the other two, um, would, would do well as administrators someday. And but as far as the athletic part of it, they were just lacking those you know, experiences. And he's originally from Sheldon. I think uh, a couple of our employees at the high school went to school with him and um, kind of knew him from there. But he's been at Preston Hill for a little while and coached football and basketball and baseball, I think, there. So I think he's going he's gonna to do well. Yeah. All right, do we have any lead items or closing comments? All right, well, then meeting is adjourned. <laughs>